Welcome to Nonprofit Network, powered by Stokes Auction Group. We are a group of fundraising professionals that specialize in raising funds to improve communities of all sizes. Hey, my name is Shelby Stokes. Kelly Schenfeld. Yo, yo, Polly Schenfeld here. Hello, Heck yeah. Gang. We are back with another episode to say, hey, Thanksgiving was great, and uh, we're, we're all full on the turkey. Um, and uh, why are we doing this podcast? We are doing this uh-huh. podcast because we love each other, okay. and we love doing this, and we like to see how we look on camera. <laughs> That's right. In various, you know, different backgrounds. It's fun. It's fun. We're having it's fun. 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 We're having fun. fun. Good, great, grand, wonderful. <laughs> How's about your weekend, Paul? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I had an event where uh, it was, <sighs> I've been thinking about this all day. There's just so many things. Um, it was tough. Yeah. If I could summarize it in one thing, I, I already told this to Shelby, but you know, I got on the microphone at eight o'clock. How in, come you didn't tell me? Why am I out of the loop? Why didn't anybody call me and tell me? You were moving a couch. You were busy. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and uh, I get on the microphone because the boss is going to come on at eight fifteen, so I'm on at eight, and I got to get everybody to fill out the dessert dash forms. They have to get filled out. And I'm like, hey, welcome, good evening, everybody. Thanks for being to here. The hey, Hunt Club. yeah, and grab these envelopes here. Would you stop talking? <laughs> no, sir. This older lady sitting in the middle of the room, loud enough for the entire room to hear. Fantastic. <laughs> would you stop talking? <laughs> Ma'am, would you like the microphone? So Just I hand it to her. Oh, <laughs> oh. my God. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. oh, good for you, Paul. Oh, man. And that's how the night started. That's how it started. <laughs> in lieu of a fund in need, we did what we called a giving tree. The giving tree was located in the silent auction. I'll be brief here. And it had different levels on it. The top star was $5,000. If you bought that, we got our new furnace. Then there was $2,000 ornaments. They were wooden ornaments. So you're buying, you're, you get the ornament and you get you know, we need dog food, we need implements for the tractors, we need maintenance for all the trucks and tractors, and you can go all the way down to $50. So I'm pitching this thing really hard, hoping that we didn't have to pitch it very hard in the live. But when I when I came out of the gate, they were not listening. Mm-hmm. They just were not listening to you me. You should have gone and stood right behind that lady and, and that's, started talking. We did the we opened up the auction with a tray of drinks, Moscow Mules. That was a hit. We should have went right into the live after that. That was a big hit. Then we, after that, we went into the giving tree. Hmm. And even though I'd been talking about it all night, Jennifer had just talked about it, I'm getting this look from the audience like, what are you I, talk- what are you uh, so about? then now I don't care. Now they go to talking. Hmm. I am literally diving into this microphone as hard as I can. We've got a volunteer sound system. And I, it, it just was a struggle. It was just mm-hmm. an absolute struggle. Yeah. And I couldn't even get the numbers from the, from the customer. And then after we did the giving tree, we did the dessert dash. Mm-hmm. And after the dessert dash, we sold six items. Oh, boy. Those last six were pretty pretty easy to sell, I would imagine. There was one of them that was a hit, and the rest of them were like, uh, I was just grinding. Yeah. <laughs> oh. so, so, like, what comes to mind is, like, something we've discussed in this podcast for uh, off and on since we started it, whenever we started it. But your audio is so Everything. essential. Like, it is essential. Like, it will make a bad auctioneer good and a good auctioneer great. Like... You have a bad sound system, though. It is very difficult to connect, no matter how many skills you have in your tool bag. Yep, and it it was plenty loud, but yep. it was two speakers in the back of the room, mm. and it was uh, we were on the long side of the room, right? I'm on the long end, and they were there was only two of them, so I'm sure the people sitting like right next to them were like, "Oh, this is fun," mm-hmm. but the MC. <laughs> uh, um, he had a headset mic, and his was just not loud enough. We couldn't get it loud enough. I, the more I think about this, I'm thinking they just were not paying attention to us. And, mm-hmm. and I'm almost like angry about it. It's like, you know, that lady yelling at me, stop mm-hmm. talking. You know, you're at a live auction. Yes, this is what I do. <laughs> I mean, uh, just, but, 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 also, so, we shouldn't have comped your ticket. 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because as soon as the live auction started, she disappeared. Is that right? Yep. Never yeah. saw her. I will say but that... But let me finish my yes, thought real okay. quick. Sorry. Right. But no, that's okay. The last several episodes, I and we have been pitching this, think outside of the box, do things differently. So when they pitched this idea to me, let's do the giving tree first, I thought, huh. all right, mm -hmm. let's do it. Mm -hmm. Let's do the let's do the giving tree, and then we'll do the dessert dash, and then we'll do the item. Let's see. Let's just see what happens. Yeah. Right? Because there is no one way to do it. Right. I mean, we said that in our last podcast. Mm -hmm. There is no one way to do this. Right. And I think if the presentation would have been better understood, we would have been much more successful. But once the wheels fell off at the beginning, it was hard to get everything back on mm -hmm. track. Yeah. So I just... Dove my way through it, got her done, but it was. Um. I want to say about that, that I think that it's important for us to look for silver linings and everything, right? No matter where we are, if we're at a car auction, if we're at the grocery store, if we're just at home and things are stressful, it's always really important to look for the silver lining. And I think you got to be a part of something that there was a huge golden lining to that I know didn't pass you by, but maybe this is the biggest um, win of the night, and that was your MC. I know exactly where you were going. And, and what he was able to accomplish, as well as the perks and the cred, I shared that video. What are you, what are you talking about? Charles. Charles. Was the MC. Charles is, well, he's developmentally disabled, is he he's not? He's on the spectrum. He's on the spectrum. Okay, mm -hmm. so he's not disabled, but he's on the spectrum. And he is the friendliest kid you'd ever meet in your oh, life. Oh, cool. And he wants to hug you at Mannheim. He wants to have a conversation with you. He's just happy to be in your presence. Yeah. And he put up a little video, and Charles was in it. And Mannheim, which is somewhere he works, mm -hmm. lifted him up. They shared it. Oh, they cool. just, so that was your, that. that was your golden lining. And I know his mom's big at the Hunt Club, and so she's been that's... a member since she was twelve. Yeah, no. she's in her seventies. But that to me was gold. That was gold. You got to make somebody's life that night. Forget the people at the auction, right? You know, forget right. it. He shined that night and you know that's what we try to look for in life is somebody that shines and maybe somebody that's receiving that we're not aware is receiving and they may have nothing to do with anything but you got to be a part of something incredibly special paul and you were the chosen one he put you with him that night uh, and and he felt comfortable and he was a part of it and he was one of the stars yes you know? indeed and that is why we do what we do. Yeah. And, and it really feels like we hit Good this point. time in the yeah. year, like where we're coming out of November and into December. And there's two very different types of events that we always see this time of year. One is like a multi-million dollar yeah. production in a ballroom that's almost overproduced mm -hmm. and like too canned, if you will, and pre and pre-planned out. And then you have the other organizations that are just getting together that are super sloppy. Right. And and it's really an odd juxtaposition juxtaposition because it always happens this time of year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You'll have an opportunity to do a multi-million dollar gala in Seattle where you're like selling trees for way too much money. And then you'll turn around and you'll do a small community event. Um, I was potentially going to step in for an auctioneer this Saturday. I talked to the customer, and mind you, this is four or five days before event and it's the first time that we've seen items and like a lot of the items are dinners with individuals in the community <coughs> and i'm looking at this like this is going to take some forethought like mm -hmm. we need to get this organized <laughs> so i talked to the last auctioneer and he goes oh yeah that happens every year i'll figure it out when i get there and i'm like oh okay so i guess like the reason i bring that up <laughs> is like it's easy to kind of get like into this pre-production big gala type mm -hmm. mindset but so much of it right now is just getting people together. It is. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, we don't even know the order of the items. We're going to throw in some desserts at this time. You know, we'll have some speakers, but we'll figure it out. It's so like nonchalant compared to some of the other customers that, that we've been partnering with. So, I mean, like if you are a smaller gala, we urge you to like give a little more forethought. But we also understand that people just want to get together. Yeah. And, you know, That's I a really think... good point. And thanks for reminding me of that because think, i've been beating myself up you don't. thinking like 
what could I have done different? You know, all these Nothing. things that we well, go through and, our head. And I think part of it is, is like we as a partner in the event space, we can lead a horse to water. We can't make that horse drink, right? And there are customers and we all know who they are or partners that we have that will never drink the water. You will say every year, I would suggest do it this way and they will never do it that way. They might not even be reading the report you're putting together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, and that's not uncommon. And like, I think that we hit some of those bumps in the road in this end of season bubble that we're in because we're through the fall, you know, we got two more events, then it's Christmas. And I think it's just easy to be low on patience right now, but those customers may never come along. And at the end of the day, if they're happy, just getting together and treating the auctioneer poorly, that maybe that's what they want to do. Yeah. But yeah, right? But but to, to that. Hey, well, watch this. Yeah. Why are you talking? Yes. You're Stop talking too fast. Talking. Stop talking. That's Stop it. talking. No, you know, and to that point, you know, we have, uh, it, it, it should go be a part of our um, workshop that we do yeah. a little uh, spit on that July, January 15th January 15th yeah which I'm super excited about that but you know to help the auctioneers understand that because the the stable that we have is is pretty go with the flow mm -hmm. but yet they need to be even more go with the flow than before and when they're in that tough space you can speak to that eloquently by saying, you know what, look for the gold lining, not the silver, but the gold. What you gave Charles that night was an absolute gift. And we don't understand it maybe because we don't, we're not functioning that way. No. But that gift, you have no idea with the connection that you made with Charles and Charles feeling big and important and special. You changed a life that night. Forget the dollars. That's on them. You changed a life. You gave him... He was a a power rock star that night, you know? And you can oh, see yeah. it we in were, that we video. Oh, arm in arm all night. Oh, I wanted him right there with me all night. I so. posted that as soon as I saw that because I thought, oh my God, that kid used to come up to me at Mannheim and just want to hug and just want to talk to me about this and talk to me about this. And he, he is such a beautiful soul. That's awesome. So yes, it was is. really cool that you got to do that. So we as auctioneers, I just spit, we as auctioneers and ringmen and being in the event space, we really are just along for the ride. Yeah. If they take our, 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 um, words or our education, our recommendations, if they take those and they do them great. If they don't, great, You're right? right? Yeah. It's, it's their gig. It's their end. It's their deal. We care, but it's not our problem. Yeah. It's their problem. And we can't cross that line. Yeah, I, I think that like one thing that I've always prided our company on is the fact that we want to see growth year over year. And there's a playbook that we have got to know pretty well. And we are the kind of organization that will say, hey, look in this direction, look in this direction. This can be improved. That can be improved. And I think that if you follow the playbook, there are gains to be made. Yes. Like we wouldn't be in this business full time if we didn't believe that to be true. Um, it's also like a delicate dance where we don't want to like come. And it's always been a hard thing with this podcast specifically is like we come in and we're like, you're not going to believe what happened. Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> and like it feels yeah. like a little bit like this, which yeah, isn't that's fair. Yeah, we were talking right? about earlier. Like, I don't want to beat these people yeah, up. Right? And, and I think part of it is like, no, it's, it's not your intention because you wanted to see it grow, right? Like yeah. you want to see them do better and you know there's a better way to do it. That said, you know, we're partners with everybody and we want to keep it as easygoing and uplifting as we can. But we know in our heart of hearts that there are ways to improve these events. Yeah, and some, some people choose. You can you can show somebody a road full of potholes and gravel and show somebody a paved road. And it is there are some people that are just going to want to go down the road with the gravel and the potholes. Well, and let's face it. It's funner We're, that way. It's more fun, and it's <laughs> our road. I mean, let's face it. We're, I'm a gravel road traveler, so yeah, I get it, true. right? But, I, I and, am. And also, like, we're going into events and asking people for money, and often that warrants some pretty big egos. Mm -hmm. And it turns out some egos aren't very open to taking direction. Yes. <laughs> it's the weirdest of things. Yes. That's right. But right. It's just... Hmm, right. So, uh, yeah. And then you get the people like, uh, you know, you mentioned the individual that's been part of the hunt club for 60 years or mm -hmm. whatever the number is. 
Good luck telling her how to yeah, do no. a fundraiser. Yeah. Like, back in my day, I used to bring 13 dozen eggs, and we used to, you know, like, you don't know nothing, kid, is, mm -hmm. is what you could be running into, too. This yeah. is their 97th hunt ball. Wow. This was their 97th hunt wow. ball. Wow. So we're you're, shooting for a hundred. You're going to be there for the centennial. It sounds like it. <laughs> sounds like which it. says, which says that they enjoy you and they enjoy what you do, and they can tell that you care. And so you know, again, we're just the doctors that show up and birth the babies, right? <laughs> we didn't grow these babies. Yeah, so. we're basically doctors. We're basically yeah, we're doctors. Basically doctors. <laughs> yeah, scalpel here. Um, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. and that's what we do. Set Quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and push. Um, favorite part of your Thanksgiving dinner was? Seahawks. Oh. oh, that was painful. That was, but that's just what came to my mind. Because the Seahawks got their very first home game on Thanksgiving in the history of the team. And they sucked. We were at it. <laughs> you were there. We were there, and we were crying in our Bailey's-infused oh, cream ooh, puffs. Ooh, I hear the... Wee, wee, wee. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's an ambulance. No, that's an ambulance. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Your favorite part. My favorite part of Thanksgiving? Uh, like my favorite, just in general? Mm -hmm. um, okay, we were going around the table, and uh, I have had some health issues. So we're all going around and talking about what, th what we're thankful for, and I got a little sappy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the room was kind of down. And then Kayla was next, and she goes, Well, I'm happy for my new Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> Love her. Oh, absolutely. it was just like perfect. Yeah. It was just like perfect. oh, like the perfect Huber spike right at the right time. I, love I her. laughed so She's hard. So good for you. Oh, She's so just, good for you. It was it was great. Mm -hmm. So that was probably that was probably the highlight moment. I mean, there was some dairy free cheesecake which I loved. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was it was a good time. Enjoyed it. And okay. you enjoyed it. Um, well, we celebrated Thanksgiving on Wednesday. Right. Yeah. So, the, talk about, weird, I'm getting sappy. What is happening? <laughs> there are not very many 62 and 57 year olds that have their parents still living. And I had in my home, my husband, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my father and my mother. And I will treasure that the rest of my life. That is awesome. Now, I that missed my is... kids, I did. And I missed my grandkids. I missed everybody, but it was wonderful and it was meant to be. And um, I took a picture and it's on my Christmas card. And I don't know, you know, dad's had health issues. My mom's been in the hospital, you know, and it so was wonderful. like it's good you and I work together on Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you would have been in the corner just right. losing it. You know, I am right. thankful. I am very thankful for your health. Uh, yes. Ha happy to that be here. That was very scary yeah, for everyone. I know, right? Um, but yeah, so it was a year that I got to really feel yeah. very lucky. And you know, like as I, as I've been thinking about it this holiday, it's just like, this has just become my favorite holiday. Maybe it is because of, you know, recent the passings cheesecake. and you know, everything that's going on, but like, it's really an opportunity to be grateful and mm -hmm. thankful. And I think that that makes it something that you age into, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you're a kid, you're not, woohoo, Thanksgiving, you know what no. I mean? But I think as I get older, I gain more appreciation for it yeah and you know what even though you don't have everybody that you want there because i really wanted you and jamie there um uh you know that if they're not there it's not because they don't want to be there right, right? Mm -hmm. and and so many people get caught up in that well they didn't come because that all are caught that's not it it's <laughs> no, like it's you it. you right. want the people that you love doing what they love to do on that day and you're grateful that you have that relationship with them that you don't have to be with them, oh. you know? My, my girls weren't even together. None of our children were together. Oh. Courtney and Andrew were in Arizona. Joel and Emily were at Emily's in Arizona. Lauren was at home. I think she had Patty over. I don't know that for a fact. Heather had her in-laws over and Denise had Joe from the auction over. Oh. None of us were together except the people that started it all. <laughs> All six of us. Comes around, huh? Comes around. Yeah. So it was a beautiful day. Meant to be. It was. It was be and the Seahawks sucked butt. Well, that light show was cool <laughs> in the beginning, though. But the halftime was a joke. I think I missed that. Yeah. Some guy that was throwing cake and know your room, man. 
the majority of the people that are there are of my age or close to my age. And we're all sitting around looking at it like, what? Is what? Why, are you, why are you wasting what? the cake? Like, so why are we wasting perfectly cake? good cake. You are throwing it, people. That's perfectly good white oh, cake. I do. I do would like to mention that. I, I do that, would like to. I, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Indubitably. I, I do would like to mention. All I have to do is say this: Dolly Parton. I missed it because I was at Half the Seahawks at the Cowboys game. game. Oh, makes me so angry. Dolly Parton wearing a Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders outfit, singing Jolene. Stop. On the field. Have you stopped dreaming about it? Is that a weird infatuation you have now? She is an absolute rock star. Isn't she like 70? She's like 78, she's 76. 76. Yeah, like. 76. But she's got the body of a 74-year-old. Well, thank God. For God <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but Dolly Parton has said it best. If you can lift it, suck it, or tuck it, I'm going to do it. Oh, jeez. She well, is iconic. Well, we are completely off track. But uh, you know what? We appreciate you. Thanks for joining One us. One more quick thing. Share oh, at the gosh. Macy's Day Parade. Cher's still doing her thing? She's killing it. She's got a Christmas really? album out. Yeah. Oh. And, yeah. Cher is rocking it. Cher is on her Cher, way Barbara back. Cher, Barbara and Dolly Parton. They're all... Yeah. I look forward to being that amazing. I don't want that to come now, but... <laughs> well, you know, maybe we could come up with like a power group, you know, kind of like Destiny's Child. I think we should. This, <gasps> this will be called... What if the three of them did a song together? Oh, please. And they started a band called Destiny's Grandma. Yeah. <laughs> or the Rockin' Grannies. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, well, we're going to close this thing down. But before we go, did you know that yams and sweet potatoes are not the same thing? Apparently not. Ask the 85-year-old in my kitchen. Yeah, I can't tell a difference, which means I need an education on this. <laughs> so come back next time where we dissect the difference between yams and sweet potatoes. I have no idea. I haven't ever eaten either of them. Right, they're just they're both orange they're both, and they taste they both, similar. They're, they're very similar, but there's apparently a definite reason. I mean, she, little girls get on Google. See, they're not the same. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. I would have missed that question in Jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For certain. Yeah. Okay, anyway, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Be well. Uh, it's December, so... No, it's not. It's still November. Well, Don't it's rush. At the, it's next week is December, so good luck with all the fundraising out there. We know there's a lot of festival of trees, a lot of healthcare organizations that are raising money for their communities. We wish you the best of luck and uh, the most fruitful of outcomes on those happenings. And if you're just getting together for a little of event, get to know the community, get to know some friends, and be patient because... Things can get a little wily out yeah. here. Yeah, there you go. Well said. Yeah. So reach out to somebody you don't know just to make them happy. Just randomly. Like, just get, randomly like, say hi. Send a text to your cell phone neighbor. Have you heard this? No, this would be fun, though. You just change your digit by one and text that number and say, hey, we're cell phone neighbors. What's going on? Oh, really? I've never heard of that. I wonder yeah. what would happen. I think there's a different name for it, but huh. something like that. Hmm. Anyway, have keep, a good day. Yeah, keep your hearts open and your vision clear. All right. Be well. Be safe. And thank you for giving. And of course, go to good. We appreciate you guys. Have a good day. Bye. Ciao.